Have you or someone you love suffered the after effects of the COVID-19 virus or one of its variants? Do lingering side effects such as fatigue, shortness of breath, cognitive dysfunction, or even interference with taste and smell make recovery feel impossible? The World Health Organization calls this long COVID, but is there anything that can be done about it? Are there natural remedies that a person can use to overcome these issues? Today, our guest is here to tell the story of his battle with this deadly virus and his miraculous recovery, which he credits to natural supplements and a whole lot of prayer. Welcome, everybody. This is Return to Eden, and I'm Allie Henson. Today's guest is here to talk about long COVID and lingering symptoms, but before we dive in, let me introduce him. He's a multi-decade force within realms of Christian radio and television, chief executive officer of Skywatch TV, Defender Publishing, and Whispering Ponies Ranch, and best-selling author, also my dad. Please welcome Tom Horn. <laughs> Also in the studio, he's the Chief Operating Officer and host of Skywatch TV, a board-certified holistic health practitioner, professional fitness and nutrition specialist, and best-selling author of books Unlocking Eden and Time Bomb. Please welcome Joe Horn. Thank you, Allie. Don't forget, though, that you co-authored Time Bomb with me. Should I take a minute to introduce myself? I, I, yeah, yeah. She's the co-author of the book Time Bomb, Allie Henson. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Which, which I think is probably why it became a bestseller. I don't know. I was there able was a... to kind of ride on your coattails. It might bit. have been the picture of your guts. Yeah. That was a painful picture to have taken, so that might have been yeah. why it yeah. sold so well. Tom, we were talking last week. By the way, if you didn't catch last week's show, go back and watch it in the archives. Tom was here talking about his experience through COVID, and Nita was on the show, his wife Nita Horn, my mom, on the show, talking about her experience, what it was like to <coughs> take a loved one to the hospital, and then upon realizing they need to be hospitalized, Finding out you're not allowed to go with them and having mm-hmm. to send them off by themselves. So if you missed that, go <coughs> back and catch it. But you know, Tom, I'm remembering when you were in the hospital, you know, having this moment where I mentioned last week, time stands still. But mm-hmm. one thing I remember is the prayers that you're making at that moment. They're prayers of life and death. Mm-hmm. You're not thinking about lingering symptoms like taste and smell and tightness of the lungs. You're just concerned about your loved one making it home okay. And at the time, I hadn't even heard of long COVID. I didn't know what long COVID was. I knew that some people who had had COVID had some lingering Mm -hmm. symptoms, but there's this whole new phenomena occurring, which is called long COVID. The World Mm -hmm. Health Organization recognizes it as a condition. Tell us about that because you are experiencing that now. So you're over the worst. You're over the initial life-threatening phase of COVID, but you're still dealing with a lot of symptoms. What is this like for you? I want Joe to be able to weigh in on this too, the you know, whole issue around what they call long COVID. And you know, like Joe says, there's so much that we are not going to know for decades in terms of what COVID has done, what it's created, the long-term health effects, and for that matter, also the people that are being vaccinated, what the long-term ramifications of all of that are. So in its own way, Coronavirus has sent us into a new epoch, if you will, that's going to sadly affect the health of people for a very, very long time. One thing we didn't get into last week, but I'll quickly state it here, is that how rapidly I improved in the hospital. Mm -hmm. As soon as I got up there, they're telling me, look, your age, the fact that you're a diabetic, uh, all this other stuff, you're a great candidate for a ventilator. Mm -hmm. The the main doctor up there is insinuating it could get real bad real fast. But literally by the next day, I was starting to improve. And I really do credit that to all of the natural supplementation that between Joe and Daniel Belt and Dr. Sams, all these people that know a lot more about it than I do, putting me on things that were boosting my natural immunity. And so what happened, seriously, was between prayer and also being on powerful natural supplementation, when I went into the hospital, my natural immunity, my natural system created by God, Mm -hmm. kicked in and started doing what it is supposed to do, and that is building antibodies to fight off this invading infection, this disease. 
So that part of it is great. I go up to the hospital, immediately I start getting better. I mean, literally within one week, I'm back home. They send me home with oxygen. Within two weeks, I'm off oxygen. My oxygen's running at 95 to 97, yeah. pretty normal. They had thought I would have to be on oxygen for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. So why was my case <clears throat> different? Now, we'll get into some of that maybe during this show. But the other thing that I noticed was while I did get past, like, all the flu-like symptoms, I got over the pneumonia. Mm -hmm. My lungs were filled up with fluid. That's one of the really scary parts yeah. on how people wind up dying with COVID pneumonia. Started getting past all that. But then as time has gone on, I've noticed that there are some lingering situations, what doctors call long COVID, mm -hmm. where fatigue, for instance, you know, I'll get up and have a good day. I've got a certain amount of energy and I'll start feeling like, all right, I'm kind of getting ahead of this thing. And I can literally wake up the next day and be so weak that I go to stand up and I can feel that my legs are wobbly. I'm, I'm totally fatigued. Meanwhile, in addition to that, cognitively impaired in terms of memory. Sometimes I get on a run. We just filmed all those shows over Skywatch TV and I was kind of even surprised at how well I remembered some of the details around you know, studies we've done in the past and like that. But I'll get mid-sentence and I'll forget what I was even talking about and it just it happens in a snap. I found myself earlier today just staring at the computer screen and couldn't even remember why I was in the room. Hmm. So it's a very, very strange kind of thing that it's doing. Also, heart palpitations. I could feel that this morning. In yeah. fact, I stopped at one moment and just did some real deep breathing because I was afraid that, you know, I'm getting ready to have a heart attack or wow. pass out or something. So there's a whole list. In fact, I have one of the lists here from one of the doctor's websites. These are the symptoms. Remaining of long symptoms, COVID. yeah, okay. of long COVID. Mm -hmm. And these are all coming out of studies in which people that have had COVID, but now they can't seem to get past some of these symptoms, the empirical evidence is starting to stack up that COVID is doing something even after you think you're over it. Yeah. And it can attack your vital organs. Maybe Joe can explain later what is even meant by micro-clotting. That's one of the things that they're talking about. But for people watching this program that have had COVID, you got past it, you might resonate with some of this list, like remaining symptoms even after seven months, up to a year or more, wow. fatigue, post-exertional melee, whatever they mean by that, brain fog, which I've been having, sensory motor symptoms, headaches and related symptoms, I haven't been having that, memory issues, big time trouble with that, insomnia, I have not had a problem with it. It takes me longer to go to sleep, but because I use CBD and other things from Eden's <laughs> Essentials, mm -hmm. once I'm asleep, I'm doing really well, I'll sleep probably a solid five or six hours. And then when I wake up, if I lay there for a little bit, I typically will doze off for another hour or more, which at my age and everything is not bad. Muscle aches, well, I probably do, but since I've had so many bone and muscle pains over the years, I don't know if, you know, if that's increased or if it hasn't. Speech and language issues. Like I noticed that I will start to say a sentence and words that in the past were just a part of my natural vocabulary. I'll misstate them, like I'll leave out a syllable or something, and immediately I'll say, well, what in the world? Same thing with writing. I find that some of the words that ought to be just simple for me to type out, I'll start to type my, wait a minute, how do you spell this word? Yeah. So it's very strange what it's doing. Shortness of breath, I've experienced that. Tachycardia, tightness in the chest, which I'm having, have had. Pleurisy, yeah. Yeah, other sleeping symptoms. So... If you had COVID and you got past it, but you're mm -hmm. experiencing, you know, a majority of these symptoms, you probably have what doctors are calling long COVID. And one of my hopes during this program would be suggestions around things that people can do. Because like I know Joe and Dr. Sam, Daniel, they all have me on like natural supplements that we would think of as brain food and those kind of things that can really help you a lot but I don't ever remember the name. I didn't, before I had COVID, remember right. the names of this stuff. And Joe hates it because he's like, Dad, you got to take more ownership of what you're taking. Oh, I don't know about that. What I need <laughs> is for you and Nita 
to put it all together and have Nita bring it to my office in the morning and I will ingest it, right? Which is why last week when we were talking about when you first got sick and Joe and Nita were the two taking care of you because they were creating this formula right. of supplements that you were taking uh, every day <clears> to try to get well, which actually leads me to my next question. Joe, when you found out that Tom was sick, mm -hmm. you know, you handpicked a selection of supplements that you had him on. Some you had already had him on just for general health, but then you brought in other things. Do you want to talk about that regimen of things that you put him on? One of the biggest struggles I had getting prepped for this show is how much time to spend on different topics. Microclotting, cytokine storm, spike proteins. A lot of people have heard those words being tossed around, but they've never stopped to research the depths of what any of it means. And I can collapse a lot of this for you very quickly and just tell you that a lot of the world's leading neuroscientists and doctors at this point are still trying, I believe, to play catch up. You know, COVID's been around, what, almost three years now? Well, it's emergent, though. We're learning it, as emergent. we go. Yeah. So we are right now, we are the case study. Mm -hmm. How long do the legs of this thing last? And these new things like microclotting are being discovered. Well, where two years ago, they might have just said, well, you know, some people go home and then there's this post discharge from the hospital death event that we can't explain. I'm convinced in our lifetime we will probably never fully understand the depths of what this virus does and I'll tell you why. There's this phrase called bio-individuality which means that if my uncle who's here today were to get COVID his symptoms might be different from my father which might be different from one of my friends and Susan versus Sally. Mm -hmm. Some people like my mom had COVID. Now she's out in the sunshine all day long with the horses and she's exposed to all those beautiful little microorganisms and gets the soil in her hands and she gets all of those histamine responses as she breathes in different grasses and different seasons and different molds and pollens and so her immune system's constantly outdoors mm -hmm. in the fresh air. Well by the grace of God she was honestly symptom-wise unscathed from all appearances during that. Now, praying against any kind right, of secondary onset. But anyway, you asked me about his regimen. To answer mm -hmm. that question in its totality, we probably should skip back a couple of years. Okay. And this is what I meant when I said trying to decide how much information would actually be helpful to people rather than just pontificate a very long story that is detailless and not engaging. But a couple of years ago, Dad, and I don't know if you remember this, but you were at a crossroads yet again with your normal standard of care doctor. Mm -hmm. And this doctor was suggesting a whole litany now of new medications, Daniel. This was for blood pressure. This is for, you know, we're going to start managing our cholesterol through medication. And your metformin is no longer a valid option. We've upped the dose until you can't handle anymore. Now we have to just give you straight up insulin injections that you're going to have to start taking home because he was deeper and deeper as the years went on into type 2 diabetes. But you made a decision. And some of this goes back probably closer to four years ago with the diabetes. And he was able to put into remission for all intents and purposes on paper, in terms of his blood labs, any variation of type 2 diabetes through the use of things like liposomal vitamin C, curcumin, which is from the curcuma longa plant. A lot of people have heard the word turmeric. But curcuminoids are the active part of that plant that actually help fight inflammation and help regulate the body's glucose. He eliminated carbs to a large degree, so he would go out to the outback and get a meat and a vegetable option and forego the dinner rolls that they bring out at the front end, you know, that you used to chain eat, right? Mm -hmm. Well, then, of course, then he starts losing all the weight. His body's able to metabolize the carbs that he does get through maybe a healthy option like brown rice. But still, again, and I don't love this, but still a fairly sedentary life, being a researcher and a writer. So most of what he was doing, he went from, you're going to need insulin injections mm -hmm to, Tom, you're not even a diabetic anymore on paper, which to me is the same thing. You're not a right. diabetic anymore. Through the use of natural supplementation, for the most part, and dietary decisions. And it included berberine, too. Berberine was added later uh, to reinforce as you weaned off of, there was a process of weaning away from the metformin. We added things like berberine, and again, you sit here grappling with, well, now Daniel and I, get, maybe Daniel come up, let's do a show on berberine. Like, it's got gut healing proper. I mean, I clamor because it's, it's difficult to know how much information to <laughs> squeeze in. But I want to do this properly because if I don't paint this picture, a lot of our viewers will miss this. Mm -hmm. So there was this decision that he had to make. 
way back before mm -hmm. any talk of COVID. Is this making sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He started making decisions for his health. So multiply that by the last four years. About two years ago, we started him on the Eden's Essentials fermented mushroom supplement, mm -hmm. which is a mix of shiitake, reishi, turkey tail, several others fermented though, so they're incredibly bioabsorbable. Mm -hmm. Again, I don't have time in this program to get into all the details, but just do a basic internet search, the power of mushrooms versus viruses. So he started taking these as a daily part of his regimen for his immune system. The polysaccharides are helping with his gut. This means that the enzymes that he's getting with the fermentation is helping him absorb nutrients that we're also giving him. And I've heard you talk a lot about your recovery in terms of the lungs. Mm -hmm. So another thing, and I'm not picking on you, but you wouldn't even know that you're taking this. <laughs> yeah. But several months before he went into the hospital with COVID, we also started him on a regimen twice a day of N-acetylcysteine. A lot of people recognize this as NAC. Well, we at Eden's have a special formula that's also combined with quercetin. So if you do any research at all on quercetin and acetylcysteine, you'll see that this is huge in terms of protecting the lungs from viral loads, from the yeah. propensity to want to you know, have capillaries squeezed off until they become scarified, which means the oxygen can't be delivered throughout the body because there's less oxygen being absorbed. And acetylcysteine is like a miracle. And it's all a part of God's nutrition. So we were putting him on N-acetylcysteine twice a day, zinc. You go down the list, zinc, vitamin C, fermented mushrooms, which also have vitamin C, fermented beets, which again, we could do an entire show. Daniel's over here. He's going to die if he doesn't yeah. get to do TV on the beats. He was on. No, every, I have to stop looking at him because he's sitting like, I could just <laughs> give gonna, him we're my headset. We're going to do shows on all of these things eventually. Yeah. We're going to talk about all of it at length. I could just give <laughs> Daniel my headset. But the point is, here's the point, because I don't want to lose people. Here's my mm -hmm. point. At different junctures, because I feel like the viewer at home might be at one of these now in his own life. He's at a crossroads where his health is okay. Seems reasonably stable. But I believe, guys, that we are in a position now because of the kind of viruses that we're seeing now with the unprecedented and unpredictable nature of new variants that might follow that initial barrage of a viral load. You combine that with pesticides, herbicides, mm -hmm. the fact that we've poisoned our water systems, people are in cities drinking chlorine, yeah. birth control, fluoride, heavy metals. And you add to what's going on with the brake pads, the car driving ahead of you, and you're inhaling that through the sinuses, and your body is storing those heavy metals because it has no way to methylate them or to get rid of them. Detox becomes a challenge. Livers are overloaded. My point is this. Tom started making decisions, and I believe this is the way we have to live now, proactively, mm -hmm. not yeah. reactively. Right. right. Because of the nature and the seriousness of some of what can suddenly come upon you now, and I'm not saying this to be apocalyptic or scary, but the decisions that my dad, whether he understood what he was swallowing or whether he was just taking what was put before him, it doesn't really make any difference. The point is his body for the last two years in the lead up to him having received COVID had a lot of antibodies, had a lot of enzymatic power, had a lot of fermented power. His guts were in different shape. His blood's in different mm -hmm. shape. Yeah. His immunity is in a different place. I swear, based on the difficulty that you still had with COVID, Dad, I really don't think you would have made it had you gone down the path 2015 to 2018 where you were making a lot of these decisions of the blood pressure medications and the cholesterol medications. And, because the thing about medications is they always begat more medications. And you ignore mm -hmm. systems in the body that are telling you I'm out of balance. Mm -hmm. By presenting the nutrition that brings them back into balance so that you can be more whole, you kind of mask the symptoms, but those systems are still desperate. So, again, vitamin D, zinc. Zinc helps stop the replication a virus envelope, the cell itself. It stifles the ability of a virus to replicate. So everybody's heard zinc, but they may not know why. That's the shortest possible way with just a few minutes on the clock that I can explain it. Vitamin D is integral to the immune system. In fact, let me just tell you, I've developed what I call the viral assist protocol. And this information is not online anywhere, so I'm just going to read it to you. This is not a shameless sales pitch for the products that we sell at Eden's Essentials. It's just that we really believe in these products, mm -hmm. which is why we've decided to include mm -hmm. them in our line. And I have a protocol when I hear of friends and neighbors and 
people that are close to my family circle citing a virus that I shall not name, or any virus for that matter, I have a protocol that we've had really good success with. And that is that we have our Eden's D3, it's in a liquid tincture. And I've got instructions here that are not meant for everybody, so I'm not going to give you dosing. I'm just going to simply explain the products. Each product has its own dosing on the bottle. This is a custom tailored protocol that is not meant for mass public consumption, if that makes sense. But our Eden's mushrooms, again, just do a basic internet search of the power of mushrooms versus viral load. Also our fermented beets, cardiovascular mm -hmm. health, enzyme support, digestion. We have Eden's zinc. By the way, all of these fit nicely into a smoothie. So if you add your version of your smoothie, your fibers, etc., you can literally put most of these products in the smoothie. So it's just simple to take every day. We also have Eden's NAC and quercetin, the very stuff that I had my father on that I believe has been instrumental in the protection and the very quick recovery of his lungs. Mm -hmm. And then Eden's vitamin C. And all of our supplements are whole food based, which means they're bioabsorbable, ready to work for your body. They're in their complete form, so they're not an isolated form of nutrition that binds in the system or clouds your pathways and your signaling. Yeah, and let me jump in here just for people that might be watching this program and attest to the fact that when you and Daniel started telling me about how potent fermented mushrooms are and all that, I started taking it immediately at the time. It got rid of a viral infection that I had, and I was amazed by it. So I went online to Google, and I start typing in stuff like fermented mushrooms viruses. And the articles that are popping up, these are from major university hospitals, right. mm -hmm. long-term studies, and even the National Institute of Health, which is the top-level agency for the United States government that works with, you know, disease mitigation. Mm -hmm. And they have a massive article over there talking about fermented mushrooms and how study after study is showing how much more powerful it is than many or most pharmaceuticals, even people who have autoimmune disease. Autoimmune, yeah. yeah. So I was astonished at how much science there is supporting that. And of course, there's been several new studies. Yeah. Anybody can Google these and read them that again have come out of the university level talking right. about the efficacy of vitamin D. Since we've got three minutes on the clock, there is one other thing that I forgot to mention about long COVID, and that has to do with losing your sense of smell yeah. and losing your sense of appetite. That was the other thing, was I lost my sense of smell. Meanwhile, all the foods that at one time I really enjoyed, they just, bleh, they just sound like garbage, smell like garbage. It was really affecting me. And Joe, you tell people, you put me on smell therapy. Explain right. to, because people watching this program yeah. could really right. benefit from that. With yeah. just a couple of minutes left, this is going to be really tricky to do. And a lot of scientists are still speculating at where the breakdown is. But between the brain, for a lot of people that have had COVID or long COVID, between the brain, the neurology of having suffered the spike proteins, the cytokine storm, the body working so hard, depleting the adrenals, attacking its own organs because it's confused about host cell viral shape mm -hmm. versus foreign invader viral shape. And these are programs we're going to really get into the woods on. But somewhere there is a disconnect or a congestion between the neurology of the brain that tells the nose, the, the olfactory receptor system throughout the sinuses that you are receiving information. So when I smell a hot dog, my brain recalls the smell of a hot dog, and that's how with a blindfold on, I should be able to tell you that it's a hot dog. That system gets kind of decentralized and the network becomes either stymied or stifled, or for some people a year after COVID still fragmented. So they're not able to perceive smell. Well, when the smell goes, there goes the taste. Mm -hmm. You can't really separate the two out. If you cannot smell food, half of the experience from the standpoint of your brain is missing. You cannot taste it properly either. That's why a lot of people that cite these coming back or there's a return of some smell or the some taste, it seems to be tandem at the same time. Smell therapy is like... And this is an oversimplification, but basically with a minute on the clock, smell therapy is kind of knocking on the doors of those neurological signaling pathways between the brain and the olfactory receptor systems. And it says, hey guys, wake up, we've got a job to do. So if there's congestion, it's time to start detoxing again. We've got to pull whatever that is that's stuck to the mucosal lining. We've got to remove these contaminations, these foreign things. If it's simply a matter of they're asleep 
or the neurology is kind of lethargic or have not recovered from the damage of the onset of the cytokine storms, et cetera, that the body's experiencing during the heavy viral load, it's like waking them up and saying, hey, fellas, it's time to get back to work. Does that and make the, sense? And the simple way of so doing that. So the simple that. way of doing that, and I'm just, again, I've got two in my hands here. In particular, research has been demonstrated on the essential oils of rosemary and peppermint in particular. And smell therapy is low-hanging fruit. It's very affordable, and it doesn't take very long. So what does that look like? Two to three times a day, you take the lid off of an essential oil like rosemary or peppermint, or maybe you have an organic coffee that you love the smell of, something with a robust flavor that you remember. It's in there, okay? And we're just going to tap on those olfactory receptors by taking the lid off, and you're going to smell this for 20 seconds to a minute three to five times a day. If you smell nothing, it doesn't mean it isn't working. It just means you need to try again. So throughout the day, you'll take oils like this, and you'll take the lid off, and you'll literally just smell them. And the reason why is they have a very potent odor. If you're going to knock on those pathways and say, wake up, fellas, these are really good suggestions. Another way to do it, and this is kind of the next level approach, if you find that just simply smelling them doesn't seem to be reactivating anything, is you can take, these are considered hot oils from nature, by the way. And yes, these are a part of the Eden's Essentials, Essential Oil line. We have these available online for you. Go to edensessentials.com and look up our essential oils. Again, it's rosemary and peppermint. You can do your own research and find that a lot of doctors have quantified these as very key to reminding the olfactory receptors that then bring back the taste and smell to be very... Basically retraining. Retraining the smell and the taste. But the next level approach, if what I just described, if you do that for two or three weeks and you feel it has not moved the needle at all, is to take a Q-tip, get an organic one that doesn't have contamination on it, take some coconut oil, dip the Q-tip in coconut oil, and you're going to line the inside of your nose with coconut oil, do both nostrils. That will protect the skin for this next part. Do not do the next part without the first part. The next part is to take a Q-tip, dip in the essential oil or get one drop on the end of a Q-tip, something like a peppermint or a rosemary. Stick that Q-tip up the nostril. Simply swath it around both sides. And you can do a couple of oils at the same time. So you might start with peppermint and then your next Q-tip is rosemary. And you're going to put one drop on the Q-tip and just kind of massage it around inside of your nasal passage. And that gives you multiple hours. Now you can go back to work. You can continue your regiment for the day. But in the background, what's happening is this really, really, really high-level smell therapy. And it's basically happening on the automatic. Yeah, and I would just add one thing. I know we're out of time. This started reversing everything for me very quickly. I was actually kind of surprised that I had such a distaste for food now, didn't have any smell. Started doing this. It was literally within just days. Yeah. All my smell started coming back to me. And then as a result, my appetite did too. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much for being here today. It's way too much information for one episode. We will talk about this again in the future. So stay tuned and catch us in upcoming weeks. Tom, Joe, thank you so much for being here today. Everybody in the studio, thank you for being here. This is Return to Eden. I'm Allie Hinson. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time.